Hey there and welcome to a brand new Blender tutorial. In this one I'm going to show you what you can do to your textures in order to cut down on render times and the maximum memory usage of your system. So why would you want to do that? Of course you would want to cut down on render times so it's more responsive and you get your results faster, but why would you want to cut down on the memory usage? Well, that is a thing that uh, comes with lower or mid-tier uh, components so if you would for instance have a graphics card with only four gigabytes of ram you would not be able to render larger scenes or uh scenes with large textures for instance 8 or 16k uh, would be problematic in some instances and then you would have to hop over to your cpu so that's why you would want to use smaller textures or uh, more optimized textures in order to get more out of your PC because then it will be easier for your graphics card to render and you might even say that 4 gigabytes are enough for you. Now I have an 8 gigabyte graphics card but that comes down to the fact that I need it for different things, for uni, for work, for a lot of stuff so I need more VRAM. So, but a 6 gigabyte card should be more than enough for most hobby artists. So, as you can see, in this instance, we have used the stock light paths, so no changes here have been made. We are not using the noising, and we are using a sample count of 128, and that will be shown in both instances. So I have rendered this scene once unoptimized and once optimized. You can see, quality is fine. We have used 861.5 megabytes of RAM or VRAM and uh, we have used 24 seconds of our pres precious life actually rendering this. Now if we go to the next one, you can see that there is virtually no difference. So the, uh, the quality is the same, 128 samples, stock lights and uh, light paths, but we have cut down on about 100 megabytes, I think, 733 can't quite remember what it was before and we have used only 16 and a half seconds so that is a huge decrease about what 15 percent 20 percent something between so that is a big big difference in uh render time so uh and that of course uh taking into account that we are literally just using four planes one for the left side one for the right side front and bottom so that's a big saver so, uh, why is this here so much faster and lower in, gra in, in um, memory used than the other one? And you have really, uh, you have to take into account that this is a very, very small scene and uh, that if you have a large scene, the difference will be larger as well. It all comes down to, wait, this funny looking guy. This is my texture optimization process and this will uh, get rid of a lot of stuff. So let me show you what I mean. I am using for the unoptimized uh, path uh, three textures: the roughness, the metallic, and the um, metalness. And all three textures combined, they're all 16 bits. Uh, they are using up 87.2 megabytes. Now my own texture, which I made using those three maps, is just 31.5 megabytes in size. And it's still 16 bit. So, why is this so much smaller than the other textures? Well, first of all, because this is just one file, while the other ones were three. And the other one is that uh, the other three files might have some channels which are unused. In order to get the same results while well, we are using three channels here to maximum potential. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop, but you can also do it in GIMP. So you have a three a free alternative to Photoshop. Uh, I don't know if you can do it in Krita or anything else, but I know that GIMP can do it uh, in a fairly simple or uh, similar manner as in Photoshop. So uh, if we drag and drop our uh, textures into Photoshop, you will quickly see that uh, if we double click on the right hand side, we are missing the options for the color channel. 
And if we go to the channels, we quickly see why, because there is no color channels. This is just a grayscale image, uh, which is really bad for what we are trying to do. Uh, some images or some textures like this one, which you got from Polyhaven, by the way, great site uh, for getting textures. You will not find these, uh, these channels. So what you can do to bypass this is import a color image. In this case, I'm going to use the diffuse. And right now you can see we have the red, green and blue components. And uh, that should be fine. Now we are going to upload our images on top of that. So import them into Photoshop like this. And now Photoshop thinks that we are dealing with RGB space because we have an RGB image in here, which we are going to just delete afterwards. And now we have still our RGB channels. But as you can see, all of them are gray right now. And the final image is gray. So what can we do? First of all, let me disable everything except one. I'm going to first use the roughness. We are going to double click on the right hand side. And now you can disable whichever channel that you want. So you should uh, delete two channels or disable two channels. Uh, but how are you going to remember which channel you disabled for which map? Well, how I remember it is fairly simple. This is the roughness. So I disable everything except the R for roughness. Now it's red. I'm going to disable this and let's go for the displacement. For displacement and bump textures, which is literally the same thing, uh, you are going to disable the red and the green one. You can, of course, disable anything else that you want, but this is how I remember it. So B is for bump. The blue channel is for the bump. And for the green channel, I'm just going, uh, uh, going to put anything else in here uh, that is not roughness or bump. So in this case, the metallic. And as you can see, it gets those funky colors and the channels are still grayscale but the combined rgb result is colorful that's this here we are just going to go to file export quick export as png or export as and then choose png export it to wherever you like and that's how you get it but how are you going to use this well that is fairly easy as well i'm going to go to my instance of blender which has this optimized workflow and now you can see I have this here. I used a separate color. Well, let me delete that. Here is the optimized texture. And this is the diffuse. Now we are using two textures instead of the normal. Wait, one, two, three, four textures that I used in the other one. So instead of four, we are using two. Now what you want to do is get this texture, this optimized texture, drag it out and search for separate. And then here we have color it's automatically going to choose RGB. And uh, right now we can just take the R value, which we said is the roughness value and plug it in here. The green value, which we said is the metallic value, put it into the metallic and the blue value, just plug it into the height. And now we have all three textures combined into one file that are that is doing three separate things, no loss in quality, but loss in render times and loss in memory. So that is all that goes to it. Now you have a great image with a great result, less memory, less render time, more responsive. It can't get much better than that. You could also use the alpha, but make sure that you're not packing normal maps in it. Uh, if you're packing normal maps, you can of course create an alpha channel and then pack something in there. But with normal maps, I wouldn't really mess too much because they need all the color information in order to display correctly. So it is better to just import a normal map here and put it into the normal socket if you needed one than to optimize that because normal maps are, they just come as optimized as they come or as they get. So that would be it. I hope this helped you. The difference is not that big in this scene, but as I said, this is a really small scene. If you had an, a scene with about 200 objects that all have separate materials, this would really, really cut down on the in your render times. And really, cutting down 15% on anything, it's pretty good, I would say. So that's it. 
and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.